We have an inside source breaking news from the CPUSA. They want to get in VC. Tell them to get in VC right now. And they're going to give us inside details. I got the scoop. We want to fucking hear it right now. I've been looking forward to this all night. So who, where where is that person? Here they are. Hello. Yo, can you hear me? Are you the CPUSA guy? That's me. Did, for, did you get expelled? I take it you got expelled, right? No, but I'm pretty much going to do some self-expulsion if so. It's I think it's time for me to make my exit, if you understand. Sure, it's it's uh, obviously it's always down to the individual's choice. Tell me what exactly you saw and what you witnessed that pushed you over the edge. Yeah, I mean, it actually occurred to me to like, uh, I, you know, talk about this after your most recent appearance on uh, Tim Pool. And uh, I found it so interesting. The guy you were talking to was uh, insisting that Joe Sims and the CPUSA more broadly has like some sort of, you know, magical influence over the Democrats, because my experience with this party has been that they're grossly incompetent uh it's a broken party i think intentionally uh and i thought it might be interesting to tell you the full story so i joined the party back in early 2021 i'm in the long island club when when i joined there were a bunch of ops in there and everybody who's doing you know 2036 or they're probably already familiar with that but if anyone's thinking about doing it you need to know that there are a ton of people in the party who are aware of this initiative and they're deliberately trying to derail it and they're trying to fuck with our people basically but just be aware of that some of them i think you know it's not a stretch to say they might i don't know if they're feds like federal agents that's ridiculous to think the fbi would put people in this fucking party well, they but claim directly, the FBI, by the way i don't mean to interrupt but the fbi does claim that they still are monitoring the party well like i'm of the view that it's probably they have informants working for them yeah but i don't think yeah. there's like agents you know what i mean like yeah, yeah, no, it, yeah, informants make sense, totally. Right, and that's definitely happening. So, okay, let me let me start from the beginning. I mean, I, I joined the party, and it just became clear right away that the way that they really fuck with this party is by making it, like, basically uh, intransigent. Our club met on Zoom. I think most of the clubs meet on Zoom. Not a lot gets done when they meet, and then through, like, procedural, like, debates or, like, little petty bullshit, like, you know, just nothing gets done, you know, like it's really like a yeah. big waste of time. You know, they're not doing any real work. So what I did was I decided to join recruiting because my club was like a dead club. They didn't meet for like six months. Um, and I decided to help out with the New York, you know, regional recruiting and to try to like funnel members into the Long Island Club. And I was able to actually get a few people. I got some younger people, which is always a good thing. Uh, CPUSA does nothing to attract like college age kids or younger, you know, even like the Young Communist League, like it's just a joke. It's like 30 year olds or older and whatever. I, but I want to briefly interrupt, tell you something because I relate to what you're saying a lot. Because uh, about half a decade ago, when I was in not more than half a decade ago, actually, I was in the one of the small youth chapters of the DSA. There's this feminine culture in these leftist organizations where they don't get anything done. Any attempt to get anything done is uh, toxic masculine. So they all just want to sit around and like feel good about each other and make friends, but they don't want to get anything done because everything is bad and tainted so the only good thing you could do is nothing or canvas for democrats right but continue sorry no it's a really good way of putting it man because you know once i had recruited a few people um most of the the clubs they communicate through signal which is if anybody doesn't know it's like a i guess it's like an encrypted you know chat app it's not totally fed infiltrated i only have it because the party told me to download it so you know i went into our signal group and i basically said you know hey we haven't met for six months what i think we should do do is hold elections and you know we need everybody to basically take on a task you know take on a role and we need to get the fucking ball rolling because nobody's doing shit. dude a bunch of these people were like pretty much down with what i was saying but then a couple of them started to come in and say like hey you know you're getting a little ahead of yourself here like slow down you know you're gonna going 100 miles an hour like relax like <laughs> whoa 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 dude viva can can uh, corroborate this whole story i want to get yeah, viva yeah. in here too if he's if he's down he knows more about the guy i'm about to talk about okay there was a guy 
in the Long Island Club who wanted to bring an American flag to one of the events. And he wasn't a gorilla or anything like that, man. He's like a regular like guy, you know, he just yeah. wanted to bring this American flag in. And this dude who I have no problem saying his name now, his name is Bruce. He fought tooth and nail, this member who wanted to bring this flag, like that's a symbol of imperialism and like freaking out or whatever. And big fight. And they both ended up leaving the club. When I Hold posted on, sorry, in this- I, I got a, the guy who wanted the flag and the person who attacked them left? Correct. Except as soon as I started posting in the signal group that we need to have elections again with a bunch of people I just recruited being voting members now, suddenly Bruce returned to the fucking party. And he decides that, well, he starts shouting me down. There's like this whole stupid argument, the, the signal group. But they actually went ahead and started a separate signal group with just like these three or four people who were like long tenured members. And essentially they decided the agenda of the next meeting. They decided who would be eligible for, you know, different positions in this little election we we're gonna have. In other words, just totally betraying the whole democratic sense centralism idea like basically rigging it and i'm i was pissed man but i'm like you know what trying to play it cool here like i'm just gonna go along with it they don't have to i wanted them to elect me chair so that i could have a position of power but all right it's not gonna happen whatever i'll just hang in there maybe i could get a delegate spot somewhere down the line. So they, they do their sham election. They actually pick Bruce, the guy, I think he's a informant, but he's actually, he runs the CPUSA Long Island Twitter. So if you see that on Twitter, that's him. And Viva was actually trying to get that back from Bruce when Bruce left the party. It, they wouldn't give it to him. Uh, there was like a whole fight over it. Bruce didn't have to give up the account, even though he wasn't in the club. It's joke man like these people like play by their own rules but then they get really rigid about rules when you want to do anything so yeah i don't know whatever i made it through that whole saga and okay i want to ingratiate myself to these people now because now we're at odds you know what i mean uh they tell me that the party is having an event called uh, the road to socialism event meeting at the party headquarters which is in manhattan which is like you know an hour away from where i live you know i'll check it out i mean what's it's a weekend i'll come by each day and i'll get to meet Meet some people dude i i didn't really know what i was walking into i thought like i thought like joe sims was this high up guy you know you have to spend a lot of time in the party to get to meet him i go to their building they're in like an old hotel in manhattan i walk in and i'm right away greeted by none other than taryn fevic oh and <laughs> there we go <laughs> I'm not cammed up right now, but um, I actually do stream. Uh, if anyone's seen me before, you know, I'm like a bald guy. Like, I'm a normal looking, like, kind of masculine guy. You know what I mean? And I walk in and I'm like, counter this woman. And she's like, oh, hi, who are you? And I'm like, here we go. And right away, I think she's assuming, like, oh, this is one of those you know, infrared people. And I, I try to like, you know, sweet talk her a little bit. I'm like, no, oh, hey, you know, I'm new, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, and, and she's like, oh, well, are you going to be at the protest tomorrow morning? And I'm like, I uh, don't know if I uh, can Honestly, make it. I don't want to interrupt you, but it really sounds like she was flirting with you. You know, just the way she was, you know, let, let me tell you something. If she was flirting with you, it would have been your responsibility. Take one for the team. Dude. <laughs> Double agent, honeypot infrared you know i'm sorry but this is your responsibility but anyway continue yeah man well it's funny you should say that because uh there may have been an opportunity which i'll get to in a second but <laughs> I, I i tell her i'm like nah i can't make the protest tomorrow morning uh, tomorrow morning i gotta go to kickboxing and she's like oh kickboxing well you'll be able to fight the oppressors then with us i was like holy sh like you can't make this person up like you know this is like it's sexual cartoon. harassment straight up <laughs> but okay i'm walking in and bro like again if anybody hasn't joined i don't want to discourage anybody you know but i'm in this place i go around these people dude it's gross like the people in this party are gross people they really are they're like well, like all the stuff we talk about online like soy boys and all no, like it's the real deal man these are like people that look like they're made of like a like a, a paste or like a jelly it's and very uncomfortable being around them. I was like, Ugh, I felt like dirty being oh, in trust this me, building. I've, uh, I've been in contact with a lot of people from all over the country, and half of these chapters are polycules, and they're full of the chromosome abundant, and they all are in a polycule, and they're, there's a, a different gender for every single member of the polycule, and it's... <laughs> it, it really is like that. Like, you know, I'm going through, and I'm meeting everybody. Everybody's very suspicious, kind of like looking me over, and I'm like, hey, what's up? And they're like, hey, uh, oh, you're new, huh? Like, they 
all know, like they all have a feeling. And uh, I run into Bruce, the wrecker guy, you know, and I'm, he, it was very weird. It's very high school. You know, he was, he's like a guy in like his fifties and he's like, pretends not to see me. And like another party member had to introduce me and he's like, oh, hey, you know, nice to meet you. It's like very weird, catty, kind of like, like you said, feminine, passive aggressive environment. Oh, Viva's and here. Yes, yeah. Oh, hey, what's up, man? Viva, what is up? Did you, you guys talking about the the Long Island Club? What's going on there? Oh, yeah, so I was, we should go back a little bit because I mentioned Bruce and the whole fucking debacle with the flag. The bitch. The bitch yeah, Bruce. you got it. You should give some more context there because you saw that whole thing go so, down. It was me and this other guy. He wasn't part of us, right? He wasn't part of the, the gorillas, but he was kind of sympathetic without even knowing. And we were talking about patriotism, actually, it, organically. And this fucking British, he's British, by the way. This British fat guy <laughs> just starts freaking out and spazzing out and starts talking about how America is evil. And we, 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 we just told him to calm down. But this guy got like a vendetta against us and for the the whole time he was trying to kick out the other guy like the guy that's not a gorilla and it became a whole thing where we were at a war with this guy and it ended up getting to the point where he insulted one of us and insulted me too and i played like the liberal card and i was like i feel so insulted <laughs> That uh, I got it, whatever, you know, and he got he, reprimanded. He, he thought, I think he left the club and then came back later he, on. He thought he was hunt. He thought he was hunting a gorilla, and you guys were just sympathizers. But it turns out the guy he was hunting was the sympathizer, and you guys yeah. were the gorillas. There's other people too, like very, very sad like people. I mean, yeah. he was he was a f total op, total pain in the ass. Yeah, I mean, like, whatever. Now, I want you to continue the Terran stuff, because it seemed like there were some steamy, spicy things you were going to tell us about your potential entanglement with Terran Fivek. Of course, for the greater good, obviously, for the cause. Oh, um, my God. I don't know if a greater good exists that could justify that, bro. But I'm in there over the weekend, and whatever. I met Joe Sims. Again, I thought, like, hey, this is the head of the party. Like, I must have to wait some time to meet him. He's just rolling through the f you know the the headquarters rolling all over the place in his little scooter and i met him and dude you talking about that guy about joe sims i was laughing my ass off he's like a, he's a feeble old man you know what i'm saying like he's so fucking like he's like our biden really yeah. i mean it, it, it's sad you know See, and it's a, it was weird and you know a little unkind he was like falling asleep during the speeches you know they're doing all these speeches where it's like some 20 year old kid telling everybody that they're racist and Joe Sims is like half asleep. I felt like I was in a retirement home slash polycule slash special ed meeting. You know, it was f***ing weird. So the end of the night, Friday night, a couple of these people turn to me and they're like, hey, are you interested in sleeping over? And I'm like, huh? um, what? what the <laughs> Wait, who asked you to sleep over? I'm trying to remember exactly who it was. Because, you know, there's a bunch of people there. But uh, it was a male member, I'm pretty sure. You know, ah! and, and <laughs> What the f***? Well, and I'm like, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not really interested in doing that. And they were like, well, why don't we just show you where the beds are? <laughs> Bruh, they got beds? Dude, so they have like a, I forget if it, it's another floor, I'm pretty sure. It's like a weird building. It's kind of hard to remember the layout, but it's another floor and you go down and it's like tiled. You know what I mean? Like hard tile floor. This is and, like the uh, horror story I gave, but I even know what their compound looks like. Bro, it's like fucking hostile. Like you're walking in, you're like, okay, somebody's going to get fucking massacred in here. Like I just know it. The rooms are like, you know, dorm style. And like, there's no fucking way I'm sleeping in like a, you know, a, a murder bunker in this godforsaken building with Taryn Fevic and Bruce and these fucking freaks. So Bruce was there? there. Well, yeah, Bruce was there, dude. Wait, Bruce these, was there. Were these bunk beds? I didn't even see the beds themselves, but but they had like a bathroom with a shower. It's weird, dude. The whole setup is very strange. I seriously, anybody doing twenty thirty six, go to the party headquarters. Pretty sure if you're a party member, you can more or less just walk in. Tell us about this sleepover and what, because this, I think this, you know. Go ahead. Well, that's the thing. I, I didn't stay. I, I kind of wish I did for the story, but it was very uncomfortable. And, you know, I, I got out of there. It, it felt like, dude, all the horror stories people hear about anime convention type people where, like, they all end up, you know, having sex with each oh other and God. everybody's so, mad. Wait, do you think these sleepovers were actually, like, sexual in nature? They're, like, doing shit? 
in these beds. I don't know, bro. Like these are like adults, you know. And like I would imagine, like, what are you doing sleeping over in like some fucking weird ass? Like, you know, there's got to be something sexual going on, you know. Like, and it was mostly guys, uh, biological men. And then two women, Taryn being one, and this other girl who was nice, but she had like insane pit hair. It was fucking weird. I, I would imagine they got to be banging. Like there's got, somebody has to be having sex there, you know, some sort of gross, weird sex. It was very uncomfortable, the whole thing. <laughs> right. Um, and then, you know, they really frowned upon me not sleeping there. Like, I think that made them more suspicious because I came back the next day and a bunch of people were like, why didn't you stay over? Why didn't you stay over? And I don't and know how to tell them. Did you ask them like, like what they were doing? That like, okay, what I miss out on? What what no. were you doing? <laughs> I probably should have pried. You know, yeah, like you oh, probably should have asked. Like oh, what did I miss? Right. What were the fun uh, sleepover activities I missed out on? You know, was there like uh, strip poker or something? They're weird people. You know, who knows what they're doing in there? Um, there was that whole experience and dude, like the, all these people, they have like, uh, you know, literature and they do like these long speeches and they're, you know, these people are fucking idiots, dude. Like they don't yeah. say anything of, of insight or substance. They ramble. Everybody's racist. Everybody in the party is racist and sexist, even though it's like all old boomers who so are like, like what they're doing, what they do is like this kind of self-criticism thing where they're like, there's structural racism and sexism and the, is that what they do or exactly, uh -huh. exactly. But, bro, like, there are people in the party, I mean, Viva knows, who are, like... Can I ask you know, a question? Does Taryn ever, like, atone for her whiteness, ever? Like, does she ever say, no. as a white no, woman? No, dude. <laughs> Never. She no, because she's a woman. And she, I, I feel like she was, like, a... Like a she feels like a queen overseeing her slave-ass simp army in that chat <laughs> so she never was like oh as a white woman or as a white person i truly want to step aside and kneel they, like she never was like i know i want to humble myself because i that's no, what dude. they do right or i i think that's what i expected but okay one of the speeches that weekend uh but he's from a, i think the queen's club and he did a whole speech on like race or whatever and he's a black kid he's one of the only black people there actually and she did not say a word the entire time he spoke or talked about anything i don't think she shared anything but you haas and you know people in this sphere of the internet did come up during that conversation someone mentioned you know pat socks and it was so weird like you see these people like it's like they poke their heads up like almost like whack-a-mole and they're like well those are just fascists it's kind of crazy that like a significant percentage of the party is like committed to stopping 2036 you know like that's really their <laughs> that's why that's why in other chapters i've observed this but for the ones you guys were observing didn't some people just join the party just to stop 2036 it was like yeah <laughs> I've heard of that. Like, people yeah. just were obsessed with that. And it was a bunch of actually DSA type people. Right. It was like joining. DSAers who joined just to be Fire. counter 2036ers. They joined to be counter 36ers, I guess. There were some people that actually, it's kind of corrupt. Like, some people would actually try and join. They weren't even part of the party. It's just that they knew old people who were in the leadership and they, they got to join. They weren't even communist. And they were going and, and speaking in meetings, or talking about random stuff that doesn't even matter. <laughs> well, that's what happened with Bruce. Like, he left. Yeah. And and then he arbitrarily comes back and he's like a voting member and deciding and still running. The he ran the social media, even though he wasn't in the club for like, I don't know, Viva, when did he leave? He was gone for like a, a fucking year and they yeah, wouldn't turn the social media over. No, he, he kept it. He was And when he was gone, he was still posting on it. He, the motherfucker hijacked, hijacked it. So... I want to ask a question. This do they do? Do they clap or do they snap or what? Or jazz hands? <laughs> or do they I think clap? It was more Maybe of a they clapping. clap. I think. I think from what I remember from the conference, I think there was a fair bit of clapping, not a lot of snapping. Or, okay, uh, they clap. That's okay. That's a start. Um, what about the point of personal privilege stuff that the DSA convention is that is that no. anywhere? Or? Okay. No. Got it. No. Thankfully, um, it's not that bad. You know, it's very weird though. Like, like they have. It's kind of sad. They have like stacks and stacks of like collector's edition, like Lenin's full. You know, full works. You know, marks like really, really old books. Like clearly, and they have like these shrines up with like Gus Hall and all these like important people. The history of the party. Uh, really don't emphasize Mao and no Stalin at all, of course. But yeah. It's just the contrast between like these 
some of them like legends, you know, in this broad movement historically uh, versus, you know, like Taryn Fevic and like the girl with pit hair and like they're fucking talking about how everybody's racist. It's it, it made me feel like I want to take this building back. You know what I mean? But the struggle so it's is like, like the building itself was kind of rebelling against the perverts that were occupying it and doing unspeakable things on the bunk beds. Is that what we get or? Exactly. Exactly, yeah. dude. Exactly. I don't know. It's it's a little bit like, again, not trying to like demotivate or whatever, like, but part of the I basically decided to leave because I just, you know, I don't know about Viva, but like, I kind of felt like I'm putting in all this work. You know, I paid a hundred dollars to fucking help that rag people's world uh, stay alive and their fundraising and all this shit. So and were like, you able to climb in power at all in the party or how did that work? Yeah, that was a big deal. Yeah, that the, we were able to climb in power in some extent, but I feel like in the CPUSA, there's a big issue because even if you did get a delegate position, right, it it's it's a whole thing with like a state conference and then it's done by them it, it's a complicated thing it's been a while i forgot but it's not as simple as getting the vote i don't think and that's what yeah. matters you know? um, no, or you else to gain just, the trust and support of the central committee because they ultimately appoint everyone yeah i know it's yeah. almost like the an electoral college the vote doesn't directly do anything it's just kind of it's a factor i guess besides I the like central committee who do you think had the most power in the party the new york ycl they got a lot of power also the legacy old people like those people who've been in the party for fucking 40 years or whatever it's kind of like nobody wants to tell them they're wrong because you know they've been there for long enough but is the there, YCL, any, is, is, do they ever butt heads with the ycl or are they fully i don't i don't really see it i they, they butt heads with the pat socks supposedly what they call it they, they they just go with whatever joe sims says it's the same thing i feel like Karen hijacking joe sims brain and all that stuff and the ycl just chills in the headquarters all the time making protests stupid protests every week that's all it is does joe sims ever use the word pat sock or is that just the younger people who use that word he Probably said patriotic socialists um so-called patriotic socialists oh, yeah, he, gave yeah. a, he gave a speech at our uh club not like through zoom i think and he was uh, talking about that he said the so-called patriotic socialists yes yeah. correct those exact words actually and he's the real patriotic socialist right because i don't know it's funny because the younger people don't know this but i'm pretty sure joe sims and rosanna if you ask them about patriotism like yeah we want to be patriotic don't they or he didn't talk about that that much at that event but i know i know it's like, like their official position it has been yeah, even during the sam webb era they would say shit like that and they'd have well, american flags and everything that's actually um something related to bruce he, he was talking about how him and a bunch of other people wanted to... There was some sort of debate in between even the Central Committee themselves about getting rid of the USA from CPUSA or something like that. What would they replace like, it with? I, I don't know. We, we were having a debate and I was like, well, then why would we call it CPUSA, right? And he said, oh, well, actually, I've been bringing that up, trying to bring that up to the committee or whatever, and a lot of them agree. It's a bunch of boomers. Some of them are... Some of them want it gone. Some of them don't. They want the United... The USA part gone? The boomers? Yeah, they're like not... Not as patriotic, some of them. So what what would they replace the USA with? I don't know. That's just something that he was saying. That it's like uh, nationalistic or whatever he was talking about. I mean, Holy look, shit. it's just, just my opinion. But like people like Bruce... I don't think it's that he has a real vision here. I think, honestly, dude, I think he's like a federal informant and I think he's there to disrupt the party and f with people and make things more difficult to operate in general. And his opposition to you and this whole movement is more about preventing the party from actually doing anything. 